Oh god. Hello, uh, if you're wondering why I was just running, uh, I was running away from my editor because I've been having a few arguments with him. I kind of said his editing sucks and, uh, well, ever since then he's been randomly changing the pitch of my vote. He just changes the pitch of my voice. Voice Makes me um, Makes me stutter. Makes me stutter. Makes me stutter sometimes. But yeah, today I've got a special video and I hate every single one of you. Okay, who wrote this? You can finally see this handsome face again. So today we'll be discussing the top six voices in and around gaming. Why it's not top five worst and best? Well, simply because. So without any more bullshitting, let's get started with the honorary mention in this top six. I know that he has nothing to do with video games, but I sure as hell don't know why. Whenever I think of the voice, I think of. That's right, Morgan Freeman. If you didn't think of Morgan Freeman when I said the voice, then you have never heard Morgan Freeman. Just listen to that voice. In this changing world, it's harder than ever to find something extraordinary. But every once in a while, a symbol of hope breaks through. Yawn a lot. Yeah. Why? Tell me why. It relaxes your throat muscles. Ever since he said that yawning makes you sound better, I've been yawning like a mofo. Right, now that we have the honorary mention out of the way, let's get started with number six. So if I yawned a lot, yes. I might start sounding like... Morgan Freeman. No, but you would certainly get a deeper voice. Dear Esther, a somber and somewhat unsettling game which plays on an island. It's less of a game and more of an artistic experiment. The plot plays on aforementioned island, along with the narrator who helps develop the mood. This narrator is the one I would like to listen to telling me stories while I lie in bed trying to fall asleep. I fly to the moon in it. I've been folded along a crease in time, a weakness in the sheet of life. Now you've settled on the opposite side of the paper to me. He has that voice that calms you down, and kind of makes you forget everything else. In the game it helps incredibly at immersing you in the world. Honestly, I would pay a lot of money to hear Tales of the Sea, narrated by him. We will intermingle. When this paper aeroplane leaves the cliff edge and casts parallel vapor trails in the dark, we will come together. Ron the narrator is a character hidden deep in the code of the game Fallout New Vegas. It is the physical representation of the actual narrator, Ron Perlman, who also narrated the previous Fallout games. This narrator is the kind of narrator I would want to have as a history teacher. Telling me what happened, how it happened, when it happened, where. Though the wasteland became anarchic after Hoover Dam, the. I think Ron the narrator has just hit the opposite of puberty. He ensured Mr. House's tyranny was broken, and neither Caesar's Legion nor NCR would ever gain control over New Vegas. Though the wasteland became anarchic after Hoover Dam, the. Ah, Rooster Teeth. A very small production company that makes unheard of things. Like, you know, Red vs. Blue, and having a few hundred subscribers on YouTube- ah! Two million subscribers! Two million?! Uh, well, apparently a lot of people know about Rooster Teeth. Now, most of the people working there in front of a camera or behind a microphone have a generally pleasing voice to listen to. Jeff Ramsey fucking it's <laughs> crazy. Uh I don't know if we're still recording or not. <laughs> an idiot. Just in case you're uh, in sixth or maybe Bernie Burns. It's true, because like when I, I go and meet people like on the Citadel, they go, Oh, are you Shepard? Gavin Free. Bing. That game definitely has the best sense of like I felt like I was in charge of that ship. However, the person whom I would give the award the voice <laughs> would have to be Jack Patillo from their gaming section, Achievement Hunter. I have heard that he used to work for a radio station, which doesn't surprise me. In general, Jack Patillo has that voice that makes me want to carry on listening, and he's the only person on this list that always talks without a script, giving him a little bonus on my list, as scripted narrators have the advantage of preparation. 
week, the Dead Space 3 composer is going to be Jason Graves, which is the same guy who did Dead Space 1 and 2, which is great, because the music in Dead Space is fantastic, and it's nice to see him back and actually continue with the series, and any Dead Space 3 news is awesome news. And he has a mofo beard! <laughs> Good old number three on this list is the narrator from the indie game Bastion. This narrator has made me question my sexuality more than once. He has that deep, grisly voice that still sends a chill down my back whenever I hear it. Proper story is supposed to start at the beginning. Ain't so simple with this one. Now here's a kid whose whole world got all twisted, leaving him stranded on a rock in the sky. He gets up, sets off for the Bastion. His voice is heard whenever you perform a story progressing action in the game. Kid pops him good. Fella got a piece of him though. There are a lot of such actions, so you get to hear his voice a lot. And sometimes I would play this game just to hear his voice again. Of all the voices on this list, he is the one I would want to have for myself. Although I don't really look like someone with that voice. He lands Not on do top I. of a breaker's bow, and it ain't broke. It spies a good perch for some target practice. Ah, uh, Half-Life 2. Home of the most mods in the world. Don't quote me on that. There are a lot of good mods for Half-Life 2, including the Stanley Parable. The most prominent thing about this game is the game consists of about 97.6% narrator and 2.4% game. You see, you only walk around and press a minimum of one and a maximum of three buttons. But while you do all this, you have a cynical, snide, and sneering narrator explaining and judging every step and every movement you make. I really do wish I could tell you more about this game, but the less you know about it going in, the better your experience is. And it's free. So you have no reason not to play this game. Now this is the kind of narrator that I want explaining every one of my steps, especially in the morning. Oh, Stanley, that's not a spoon, that's a fork. Without giving too much away, I'll give you a voice sample from the opening scene. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. And the number one is... Brandon Jones from GameTrailers.com Of all the narrators and voices on this list, he has by far THE, no really, THE voice. Whenever he reviews a game, he delivers his sentences with such confidence and such professionality, you'd believe anything he says. He has that very matter-of-fact voice, but not the annoying kind. Schadenfreude. Modern Warfare 3 picks up at the second's conclusion. Having just killed the traitor Shepard with a knife to the eye socket, Soap McTavish is on death's door, and Captain Price is intent on saving him. Meanwhile, ultra-nationalist leader Vladimir Makarov's deception has led to World War 3 with the US... If I would suggest watching anything, anything on that website, it would be the retrospectives, voiced by Brandon Jones. It is literally a history lesson in video games, and accompanied by this voice, it motivates players to try new roles. The specialist class is for expert players as you're given extra perks as the kills roll up. You're in for some quality time. And that pretty much sums up this video. Again, sorry for the big break between videos. I've been kind of busy lately. But if you want more me goodness, I don't know why you'd want that. And you click on this link, if the video's out already, then I'll link it with the video. If not, I'll link it with the link. And this is a little let's play I did with Mr. Abo something. It's me playing Amnesia with him, and well, um, yeah, I kind of, uh, pissed my pants. And another thing, there is a fellow game reviewer called... And, well, he's only got 71 subscribers. I do think he could do with a few more, so why don't you hit up his game reviews. I will be doing a review with him sometime in the future, it just takes a long time because we live nine hours apart. Well, if you like my videos and my reviews, you should watch his videos and his reviews. They're quite similar to mine, just good. 
This is the end. The end. The end of the video. The end. The I can't sing. I can also tell you the next game that I'm reviewing is Super Monkey Ball for the GameCube. Goodbye! And, like I've said before, you can subscribe to me on ScrewAttack, where I post the occasional blog post, the last of which even got featured. I'll post a link here. I'll try and put them out on a more regular basis, but I'm really trying as hard as I can.